Praise God, would you stand with me tonight? We serve a big God, amen? amen? Did you come to worship Him tonight? Amen. amen. Father, we come into Your presence. And Lord, we're going to worship You in spirit and in truth because You're worthy of our praise. Amen.
God is raising, I've said that for you to pray for Steve. His name is Steve McEwen. If you're not friends with him on Facebook, uh, he's one of my friends. Check him out. But let me tell you something. God raised him up. He's raising him up again. It's a fight, it's a battle, it's a struggle, but we have already won the battle. But we can't avoid the battle. We can't run from the battle. David did not run from Goliath. He said, the Lord has given you into my hand, but he had to go out there and face it. And I got to tell you something, he was a little uh, guy facing this monster. Put yourself in his position, very young. Put yourself in his position. You probably would have been a little bit apprehensive about that meeting. I don't want to face that. I don't want to face my disease. I don't want to face cancer. I don't want to face surgery. I don't want to face this. Sometimes you're a little apprehensive about it. But God says, get out there and I will take care of you. You show up and I'll do the work. There you go. You got to show up though. Amen. You can't hide behind the bales or the rocks. You have to get out there and show up. Amen. Ephesians 6 and 17. Take the helmet of salvation. And we talked about that last week. Tonight we're going to talk about the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. How many brought your sword Amen. tonight? Amen. If you didn't, there's one under your pew. Let me read a couple of foundational scriptures real quick. Romans 13 and 12. And I'm sorry, I don't know if we guys said the verses, brother. I I didn't give them to Donna, so you might have to just stay up with us. Romans 13 and 12. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. We've been talking about the armor of God. Now, up to this point, it's all been the de defensive gear. Have you noticed that? Well, now we're starting on the offensive weapon. This is the offensive weapon that God gave you. Amen. God gave you the mighty sword of the Word of God. In more ways than one, We understand something. This is an offensive weapon. But let me say this. A little play of words here. It's also an offensive weapon. It has offended many. Yes. Yeah. That's true. Amen. That's true. I'm just appalled. No, I shouldn't say that. Um, I am amazed and how easy it is to offend anybody nowadays. I mean, you can just look at them wrong and they're offended. You can say something and they're offended. You, you, are, are you experiencing that? Yep. You know? You say something about the food in the restaurant, they get offended. I was giving you a compliment. You know? Like, you know, uh, one of the Andy Griffith guys, uh, family singers, somebody help me. Denver Pyle was the actor. Yes. What's his <laughs> name in there? Gomer? No, no not, not Gomer. Oh. The Darling family. The Darling. They were there one night and been playing music and Andy had to put them in jail. Yep. And so they had to feed them. And Miss B cooked dinner for them. No, that was another episode, but that was a good one too. <laughs> he come down out of the hills to court Miss B. Remember that one? Had them over to dinner and they fed them and all she had was beans. And he ate those beans, and she asked him, said, did you like those beans? He said, I loved them. Well, you didn't say anything. 
Well, I ate four bowls. <laughs> so, you, you know, people can get offended at the least little thing. Some of you are offended how cold it is in here. <laughs> can you get my jacket too? No. It is a little chilly in here. Feels good. Oh, Linda's fine. <laughs> Feels good. Now, Donna's cold and you're not. That's weird. <laughs> Hebrews 4.12 For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of the center of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and the oil, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. I, I want to tell you something. The word of God is powerful. Now, I want to share a story with you for a few moments tonight. Out of Matthew chapter 4, we see Jesus, how he uses the sword. And uh, I think this is one of the best illustrations that we could use. Matthew chapter 4, we're going to be verses 1 through 11. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Jesus had just been baptized by John. The heavens opened, a voice spoke. This is my beloved son, son in whom I am well pleased. And the Holy Spirit lit upon him like a dove. And so now, right after that monumentous moment, Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Let me get a couple of things ironed out here. The word tempt there, it meant to stretch. That's what it meant to put to a test by stretching. Jesus was full of God, but he was also full of men. He did not lay aside his divine nature as much as he laid aside some of his flesh. Let me say it without starting a, a, a stampede. Um, some of his, the use he had of it. He did not use it. Why? Because God would, he became man to save men. Now, Satan tried Jesus, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Why? Let's just read our verse and I get to this part. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, <coughs> He was afterward hungered. And the tempter, that is Satan, came to him and said, if thou, be the, if thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. You think Satan really wanted to know? I want you to think as we're going through this. Why this happened? Why did this happen? But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up to the holy city and set him upon a pinnacle of the temple and said, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, this is Satan talking here, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Psalm has said that Satan quotes scripture, he misquotes scripture. That's found in Psalms 91, 11 and 12. We're going to go to that in just a moment. Verse 7 in Matthew 4. Jesus said to him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh them uh, up into an exceeding high mountain showed, and showed them 
all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he said to him, All these things will I give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Get thee hence, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. In verse 1, let's come back to the verse 1 real quick, brother, and you kind of follow me through with it. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Uh, could you put up, I'll just read it, Mark 1 and 12. Covers this story. And the Bible says, immediately the Spirit driveth him into the wilderness. Actually, it's a very strong word that he was pulled. This was his, he had to do this. There was a reason that he had to do it. God arranged for this temptation. God set it all up. Imagine that. Why did he arrange this? I want to tell you a few reasons, I believe. You can come up with your own. But as I studied, I, I found that he did this to prepare Christ to become our high priest. Hebrews 2 and 18 said, For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to secure them that are tempted. Amen. He was tempted. He's been there. You ever heard that? Also, he's been there, done that. He's been there and not done that. Amen. We get into a spot sometimes and we find ourselves short and giving in to the temptation, the testing, saying those at us. Hebrews 4 and 15 says, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like us, as we are, yet without sin. Amen. 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 Everything that you've gone through, Jesus went through it. And he had to. And yet, without sin. Now, let me tell you something awesome about this. Psalms 103 and 14 has always spoke to my heart. It says, for he knoweth our frame. How would he know our frame? Because he lived in it. Amen. He fasted for 40 days. Let me tell you something. When he came off the fast, he had a body just like you and I. How many ever been on a fast? And I don't mean driving through McDonald's. He's <laughs> been on a fast. Most of us have been on a fast sometimes two days, three days. I'm not going to ask you to, to, to share how long it was. But imagine 40 days. 40 days in the Bible, or 40, the number 40 in the Bible, is a number for 10. Testing. When Israel was tested for 40 years, wandering in the wilderness. Say again. Oh. And he was, he fasted for 40 days yet. The devil knew that. Knew that he was hungry. He knows he, that Satan knows where, he, where to hit you. He knows what you're needing. He knows how to come to you. He is, he's a slick dude. He's not going to come to you and say, hey, I got a deal for you. Not going to hurt you a bit. Take out a second, third mortgage. It's not going to, hey, housing market's doing great. Get, the, get a bunch of money in. You deserve to go to Hawaii. Hello? I can remember when this happened in the 80s, 90s, 80s, or housing 
real estate lady. When do we buy a house? Said Miguel. Ninety. Ninety-one. Anyways, after 96, it started climbing. And there was literally advertisement. Now, if, if you're falling into this, I hope I can catch you before you get into this trap. But there literally was advertisement that said, why waste your equity? Get your equity out. Go on a cruise. Take that long vacation you've always wanted. People are taking out second mortgages, borrowing up to the hill, you know, to pay fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars for a wedding. I, you know, I thought, wow, I never was able to officiate at one of those. My they always slipped you a hundred dollars so you're still walking away. Glad to have you for it. Four nights of preparation and <laughs> in any case. And then all of a sudden the housing market went kaboom. We bought a house, put it on a 15-year note, so we could have it paid off. By the way, that's a little trick if you didn't know it. You buy a house for 30 years. Pay one extra payment a year, you go down to a 15 year note at interest rates the way they were then. And I'm not a real estate person, you want to talk about real estate, talk to somebody that knows, but I'm just telling you. Uh, so we got, we, we did that. We bought low and sold it when it went high. We made over double our money on that house. And we gave it almost all away. That's just the way it works. And so pretty soon the bottom fell out. And all those houses, they were selling for four and five hundred thousand dollars. All of a sudden they went into foreclosure. Well lo and behold we were back in Stockton again and bought a foreclosure. A five hundred thousand dollar home for a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And both of us got sick, could not stay there. The Delta, the San Joaquin Valley is a tough valley if you got any kind of lung problems. That's right. That. And so I had a buddy who had bought one of those houses and was way upside down in it because the market dropped. I said, do a short sale on it. Work it out with your bank when you get it. You buy my house for just what we all wanted. And so he bought a the moment he took, and I, I said, I can't pay the payment on it now, so you're going to have to live in it and make the payment. Okay, and it's not rent. I'm not going to refund it to you, but it's, it's going towards payment. The price of the house stays at this point right here, and you can finance it this year. So when he took the house to finance it, he had over $150,000 in equity the day he bought it. So we could have, but that's a trap the devil was setting for people. People, Some people lost everything. And he's still setting that trap. If you're getting buried in debt, that's a trap from Satan. Now you hear this pastor. You need to talk to someone and help yourself get out of it. Hello? Amen. Satan does not want you to be profitable. And I'm sorry, this is not a Dallas type sermon or Houston. We fight a battle. It's a real battle. 
Jesus, it says here, Psalms 103, which is a prophecy, a word about Jesus. For he knoweth our frame, and he remembereth that we are dust. The way he knows it, he's been through it. He knows what you're going through. He knows exactly what you're going through. He has compassion and understanding for us, remembering that we are of dust. Because he knows exactly how it feels to be tempted. He was there. And yet without sin. He knows all of our struggles. So I want to tell you that's the first reason I believe that God arranged this temptation. Was to prepare Jesus to become our high priest. Secondly, I believe he, he went through this to expose Satan's devices. To expose Satan's devices. The devil likes and prefers to lurk around in the darkness and then spring out in a surprise attack. The devil doesn't want us to know his tactics, his methods. But Jesus flushed them out on that day. Section Corinthians 2 and 11 tells us that Satan should get an advantage over us, for we are not ignorant of his design devices. We're not ignorant of it. Why? Thanks to Jesus. And you will walk away tonight ignorant. You're going to know how Satan's fighting you. Third thing is God arranged this to teach us how our swords work. How many's got a sword? How many's ever taken it out of a shield and used it? Just because Jesus, and I mentioned this a while ago, just because he was the Son of God doesn't mean his temptations were real. They were real. He had laid aside his divine powers so that can be mis misconstrued because he still had tremendous powers. He faced Satan as a man and human and in flesh, using the sword of the Spirit. He was hungry. He thirsted. He fought him in the flesh, just like you do. Now, he's equipping you to do it. Now, all of the quotations that day that are read to you, are actually from Deuteronomy 6 and 8. <coughs> now, the, the thought I had as I, as I realized that is perhaps that was Jesus' devotion that day. Out of the Torah, perhaps he had been reading Deuteronomy 6 and 8. How many have a daily devotion? How many read your Bible every day? How many have a plan to read it through in a year or in six months? How many's never read the Bible all the way through? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> Had a friend tell me one time, you know, he's been preaching for 30 years. He said, you know, in all this time, I've never just read the Bible all the way through. Thought, how can you give a book report on a book you haven't read? You waiting for the sequel? <laughs> Come out waiting for the movie? Doesn't work like that. I tried, and I, I'm going to get used to it. I tried to watch. What were we watching the other day? You were. Um, New thing they got going on. The Chosen. Yeah, I, I tried to watch that. Number one, 
I couldn't understand them, and I know they were speaking in Arabic. Some was speaking with London, uh, an English accent. <laughs> Wait a minute. And I couldn't make out their tales of who's who, and I, you know, and I know I've read the story. If it's not in there, I didn't read it, but if it's in there, I read it. But how can you not know what the Bible says? How can you go into battle without trying? That's why David told Saul, I can't use your armor. I can't use your sword. I can't use your shield. I haven't tried this. I haven't tested it. I'm going to use what works for me. And God gave us something to fight Satan with. It's a good thing that, God, that Jesus didn't try to win using human reasoning. I don't know where you fall on this issue, and I'm not even going to... This is one of those nights... Hold on, just one second. Having a tough time tonight. Is that right? Yeah. I'll get through it. But uh, I don't know where you fall on this side, uh, which fence you fall on. But I know that there are people that think we ought to replace our police department with no, no. psychologists and counselors. No. And. <laughs> I'm sure I'm glad that Jesus didn't try to use psychology on Satan. When I have a problem, and I'll call Reno PD, <laughs> and when they show up 15 minutes later, 20 if you're lucky, and I know they got it handled. Amen. We had a situation over the office one morning, and uh, I think it was a Saturday, I'm not sure. And I got a call that somebody's busted in. Uh, Naomi called us. She's our watch card over there. Said uh, somebody's trying to break in the <clears throat> office. So I said, I'll be right down. And sure enough, there was somebody there. I looked over and said, I know that guy. <laughs> and he was doing his best. One, and we watched the videotape as he would go up to the front door. He'd back up and I, he'd run into it just as hard as he possibly can and bounce off. <laughs> That's the only thing good about the beer. But he back up and hit it again. And I thought, oh man, he's going to hurt himself. And then he went around the back door. For those of you that don't know this about the back door, we've got a one inch metal rod that goes to a couple of hats that are mounted to the four inch beams there. You couldn't get through there if you wanted to. And he was back there, and I thought he was going to kill himself. <laughs> and uh, so when I got there, I pulled up and around the parking area there, close to where Ruben was, and thank you for being there, brother. If you had been there, you would have helped me that day. <laughs> but I was glad to see three cars, you know, PD there. And the guy was standing there and he says, I want to talk to him. He wanted to come over. And I said, sure, you know. He wanted to come over and, and, and get in my face. I was willing to let him, but Reno you know, PD knew better. He says, well, let me tell you what we'll do. Uh, you want to talk to him? We'll let you, but let's, we're going to put your cuffs first. He said, no, I don't want to talk to him. 
<laughs> you see, we need to put the handcuffs on Satan. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. I, you Amen. know, we need to. They came, they were packing. At that time, I wasn't. Don't count that now. But sometimes you got to take the handcuffs off and put them on. Take them out of the case and put them on. Jesus used the same sword that I can use. He said, this is your tool too. It belongs to you. Another reason I think that Jesus, that God did this, was to, ex to literally expose Satan's strategies. And I want to talk about those for just a moment tonight. I want to expose some of his strategies. First of all, he has a strategy he wanted to satisfy a right desire the wrong way. We all have desires. For those of you that are here say you don't have any desires, let me tell you, you are lying to us. All of us have a desire. Some of you desire to be at home right now. <laughs> he got hungry. He, listen, verses 2 and 3 tells us with a real body that he got very hungry in 40 days. You know that. It come off the fast. I've never fasted that long. I've fasted a few days. But when I came off of it, I was hungry. I didn't go down to the buffet because that'll kill you. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to start light. You know, if you're, if you're fasting, if you haven't fasted, don't fast a week and then jump back into Big Macs because you won't make it through the day. And he had a natural appetite. His taste buds would water for the thought of food. How many ever been really hungry? I mean, you know, I got to tell you something. Michael, you haven't tried this. Michael makes the second best biscuits, biscuits I've eaten. But Miss Donna has made the best biscuits. biscuits. I can't say it, but I can eat them. <laughs> I mean, to tell you, she makes some good biscuits. She don't make them anymore because I'm not supposed to eat them. <laughs> but there are times they get hungry and say, baby, I just want this. I want that. She'll give it to me. Jesus could have satisfied a legitimate desire, but in an illegitimate way. Satan tempted him to use his power to produce instant food. He could have done it. He was Jesus. Don't you remember? He took five loaves and two fishes of it. Seven, eight thousand people. Ten if you count them. All of them. And still have twelve baskets left over. I mean, you know, he could do, he could do it. So Satan tempted him to use his power to produce instant food. That's something we're quite used to today. Instant food. Instant oatmeal. Instant potatoes. Instant soup. Instant grits. I mean, there's something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> no instant grits. But they're all right. That's all you get. Anyways. <laughs> well, we put food in the microwave, and then there too, you have a hot meal. 
tastes like the plastic plate that you're eating it in, but it's, it's a meal. Or we'd pull over to the closest fast food place, you get a meal, used to be pretty quick. Not anymore. Not anymore. In the case of Jesus, he could literally he could have turned desert stones into bread. After all, John had said that in Matthew uh, four and nine. He said, "I don't know if we pulled that one up or not." But he had said that God could turn stone, the stones uh, into uh, sons of Abraham. He could have turned the stones into the sons of Abraham. If Jesus uh, is God's son, then surely he could turn stones into bread, which would have been a lesser miracle than making sons of Abraham out of them. He could have done it. But as would be doing it wrong. You still have the desire, that's what I'm telling you, that he, he shows one of Satan's strategies is to get us to do or to satisfy right desire with a wrong, in the wrong way. He had the power, and of course, the question is, why not use it? What would we have done? Think about it. We used to wear bracelets and say, what would Jesus do? What would we have done in that case? Would we have given in? That's a strong temptation. The desire for food was innocent, but it was strong. The need was imperative. He was 40 days without food. And he had the power to secure instant relief. So the bait is skillfully wound over the barbed hook. That's the way Satan works. He wraps it up all pretty and nice. That can't hurt you. Jesus' response in verse 4, It's written, Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen. There's power in the word. It is a sword that fights against Satan. It's sharp, and its sharp edges can cut at Satan. The blood handle can be used to crush his head. The pointed tip can be used to run him through. And it matters not if you're right-handed or left-handed. Highly trained or new to what we're talking about. Satan cannot compete against God's offensive weapon of the Word of God. You may not be a skilled swordsman in His Word, but His Word is still His Word. Amen. You don't have to know every word in there. You don't have to be able to quote every verse, you know, Find the one that works for it. Quote it. Use it against Satan. Satan simply cannot compete against God's offensive weapon. Yeah. How about you? Have you got God-given, or rather, have you got God-given desires? They come from God. They're desires. You have them. Yeah. We're adults in here, so I'm going to talk. Shall you put, no, she can cut this out. I'm going to. I'm going to trust her. Sexual desires. Have I got your attention? They're normal and they're natural. But God made them to be with the right species, the right gender, and within the bounds of marriage. Amen. The list is growing. You're so radical. <laughs> they now add an AI to it. Oh. You, does that mean you, you can now marry a robot? <laughs> or that's what they will... Wait. 
We thought that years ago. Don't, wasn't there a movie called The Stepford Wives or something? Yeah. Like that? <laughs> yeah. That was Ahab before his time. Yeah. yeah. But it, they are serious about this. But let me give you a little hint. You're not an animal. Just roaming the countryside, sowing your seeds wherever you want to. You had that desire, but God gave you a way to satisfy them right, the right way right species, the right gender, and in the bounds of marriage. Yeah. Satan attempts to turn that normal desire into adultery and fornication. It is amazing. The world of pornography, how it has grown. And truthfully, I'm going to tell you some things. I have and don't start looking around this room. <laughs> but I have counseled many Christians over that, through that. Some were pastors. And Satan don't care who you are. That's right. That's right. That's right. He throws it at you. And you watch today's commercials, you don't know if you're buying a hamburger from Jack in the Box or, or what she's trying to sell. Mm -hmm. Satan will blow that at you. Another natural desire or God-given desire is ambition. I kind of wish more expressed this natural desire to work and improve themselves. They don't. Satan turns ambition into covetousness, greed, yeah. and selfishness. Yeah. <coughs> Sleep and rest. I'm an addict to sleep and rest. I do it every day. <laughs> Satan urges us to take it to the extreme of laziness and slothfulness. We have a culture that we're, and hang on to your thinker because it's going to be challenged over the next few months. There were people that were getting paid not to work. I'm not, I don't want to go, I want to find a job and I'm making more not working than I am working. The next you know what the next pandemic is? What's coming? How many would like to hear from me? Climate problems. Um, they are, in fact, I, I read an article about our illustrious vice president Boy, that's a college grad there. And she was talking about all that they were doing for climate change. This is a real thing for them. I mean, and I'm not saying it's not hot. I didn't get hot today, but Texas got hot. Florida got hot. Hey, I lived in Florida. I already knew that. <laughs> So I don't live there anymore. We lived in Texas. We don't live there anymore. Is it rough? Is it bad? It could be. I'm not, I'm just trying to say it's going to become the next social experiment. They told us that this, they're talking about climate shutdowns. And I, I got to hurry. I got sidetracked. They're talking about climate shutdowns. How do you do that? Well, they're doing it in California. <laughs> they are now telling us that you can't buy gas-powered lawnmowers, weed eaters, chainsaws, 
Can you imagine trying to mow my five acres up there with a battery powered lawnmower? Man. And they, they, you know, they don't have the power to charge my batteries up there. Right. What that's, that? the that's the stupid that, that's That's coming. You can say you heard it here first, huh? It's, it's lunacy, right? But that's demonic, the demonic influence that he has in this world today. So, the, they're busy back there. Can we take a few more minutes? I, I don't normally do this. The culture has now made it okay to steal. Not from need, but from greed. Not the, 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 the limit question I ask you, if your family was starving to death, would you steal to feed them? I think most of us would say yes. I wouldn't let my family starve. I may not eat, but I would make sure they could eat. Is, would that be satisfying a right desire in the wrong way? You know what? I, I won't pass judgment on that. But I will say this. Culture has now made it okay to steal. And not for the fact that you're in need. I watch the television, the news, or I don't watch it much, but they have these flash mobs. They go into stores and they take everything that's not well, they take up things, even the stuff that's nailed down, they'll jerk it off the floor. And don't you dare do anything against them. That They have policies, don't call the police. And uh, in fact, I saw, this was, this would kill me. This lady that worked for Circle K. Do you even know what Circle K is? 7-Eleven Circle K. Yeah. Convenience store. She worked for him, I think it was for 18 years. And she was fired because she tried to prevent somebody from stealing a pack of cigarettes. Not food, pack of cigarettes. She was fired. And she was out here. Man, I'd see if I could get her job somewhere. <coughs> Don and I would hire her to clean our house. Could pay her, we'd hire her. <laughs> I understand this. We eat to live, no problem, I know that. Satan wants us to live to eat. That's gluttony. Get everything you want. I gotta quit. How many will let me come back next week and do this? Oh, Sean's coming here next week. All right. The following week. I'll mark my spot and Sean can finish me. But I want to tell you something. Satan has a, a strategy and he wants to keep it hidden from you. He wants to destroy your home. He wants to define your friendships, your loyalties. He wants to take he wants to take your ministries. He wants to define the church. And we gotta watch what he's doing. Amen. And call him down. Amen. Rebuke him. In the name of Jesus. James talks about that temptation. We have to resist Satanus. He begins to move. And you resist him with the Word of God. Not in your own strength. I've already told you, you're not good enough in your own strength. You can't fight those desires. I had a bunch more desires. I ran out of time. My desire was to go on. But I ran out of time. And I'm not going to give into it. So... I want to challenge you. 
use the sword that God's given you. Amen. Use it skillfully. If you don't know how to use it, stay in church. Come to church and find out how to use God's word skillfully. Amen. Would you stand with us? Father, I thank you for your, your word to God. We know that every word, every word was given by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, God. And you told us that we don't live by bread alone, but by every word, every word proceeds out of the mouth of God. Father, I pray strengthen us, that God, and fill us with your word. As we were going to share, as David said, I've hid your word in my heart yes. that it might not sin against you. Yeah. Yeah. I've placed it in there that it might not sin against you. I pray, God, that you'd help us in Jesus' name to accomplish this. Amen. Father, keep your hand upon us, bring us back, ready to worship you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Love somebody Amen. before you leave tonight.